perfect happiness for a thousand years. That's what the Spirit is going to promise. And Almost we, like the Garden of Eden created all over uh -huh. again. And now we find that a lot of preachers are, are, are preaching the great age of uh, glorious new age of victory, victory over wars, victory over social unrest, victory over famines, and victory over all kinds of... Uh, and horrible. he used the words new age to describe well, hmm. what was coming. It would be a glorious new age, yeah. And uh, this is exactly what the movement is all about today. Hmm. And he went on and said, as I said a little earlier, <laughs> that as life on this planet becomes more and more difficult, and calamities will strike the planet more and more frequently. The spirits at that time is go are going to put all their effort to impress religious leaders, to bring before the, the masses of the earth the, the sacredness of Sunday. See? They will teach Sunday sacredness. And with the religious leaders, looking forward to a thousand years of perfect peace on earth, they will put all their effort into it. Then laws will be passed by governments. Uh, yeah, when one person asks, what's going to happen about people that don't believe in the Spirit's uh, recommendation? <laughs> the priest says, that's no problem at all. Laws will be passed by governments that will force people to go along with it, regardless of whether they believe in it or not. And he says, the law enforcement officers will explain to people, make it clear that such a law is necessary to assure the well-being of all people. Says the laws will be passed, no effort at all. And then he, he went on and he, and, and he said about the fact that um, uh, the venerability of the sun, which in ages past was such an irritant to the Creator, all the, these great nations and other nations, the smaller ones, were all involved in sun worship. And in those centuries, the Creator found that teaching of the worship of the sun to be a terrible irritant. And he said, it is going again to take place, but not in worshiping the sun, in remembering Sunday to keep it holy. He made a statement I would never forget. He says, by the observance of the day upon which the master, Satan, has placed the unction of his authority and power, He receives homage, regardless of whom people claim to worship. Isn't that something? Hmm. So, can you understand now why I had 28 Bible studies in one week and started to, to go to church on Sabbath, and I never missed since uh, until I began to sick. So. The issue of a day of worship came up in that meeting. Mm -hmm. Was Sunday the only day mentioned? Well, you see, the, the priest mentioned yes about the fact Satan has chosen Sunday as his day. The Creator has chosen the seventh day of the week. Lucifer has chosen to call his day the first day of the week, Sunday. See, And regardless of what people uh, claim to, to worship, worshiping God, the Creator, by observing that day, that particular day, they are bringing homage and respect. Now at that time in your life, you were 20 years old or so, mm -hmm. had you ever heard of a Seventh-day Adventist? Never in my life. In no, that meeting... They didn't talk about Seventh-day Adventist. They talked strictly about Adventist. Well, they just talked, but they did, the word Adventist yeah. was mentioned. The priest was telling us <clears throat> that uh, necromancy, as I mentioned earlier, is the belief that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence, etc. And he says, for centuries, Friendly demon spirits have worked diligently to establish and uphold in the religious convictions of all people the belief that man has an immortal soul. See? Then he boasted about the fact that the master was so smart in that he had this, deceived the whole world even this, in this age of great scientific knowledge and, and, and understanding. Then one person put his hand up and died. He says, yeah, yes, we want to say something. He says, what about the Adventist? <laughs> you can't count them to see regarding the, uh, the, the state of the dead. And I got a question. 
What about how come they, 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 they can be brought under the great deception? The priest said, you, you're, you're right. I apologize, says here, I, I made a mistake. When I said that the, the, all the millions of people living on the face of this planet, everybody, you know, was honoring the, the great master. I forgot the Adventists. There's so few in number when you figure the, the billions and all people, I didn't even mention, think of mentioning it. So I'm sorry. Then he says, secondly, the reason why they can't be brought into the great deception, let me explain about it. Now he said, my next statement is going to upset some of you. But what I'm telling you is the honest truth. It, it, it is factual. It's reality. The fact that the Adventists observe the biblical Sabbath of creation and reverence the Creator on that day, it makes it impossible for the spirits to deceive them. They are given very special help and great in, in spiritual insight. And he said, under these conditions, they are not ordinary people. And that stayed with me, man. Just like this. And when I heard the, 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 the word Adventist, when Sir Cyril told me later on, which we're going to cover later, I asked him, I said, what did the you belong to? He said, I'm a seventh Adventist. What's that again? He said, I'm a seventh Adventist. I said, is that the same thing as, as Adventist? Oh yeah, he says, a lot of people call us the Adventist. They don't talk about, about the seventh, same thing. Well, I was interested. I bet you were. Now I wanted to know what his Bible said. Yeah, I bet you did. Because that was the one group yeah. that the under question only the high priest of the demonic uh -huh. uh, uh, worship house. Yeah. The thing that he had said to you was, "This is the one group that can't be deceived." That's right. And so somewhere back inside that mm -hmm. that uh, that resistance you had had mm -hmm. came out, and you awoke. A few months later, that experience, unique experience, was instrumental in helping me make a decision for Christ. And also, I had no hesitation to join myself to God's commandment keeping people because of the fact that I knew what kind of people they were. And after having had 28 Bible studies in one week, I started to keep the, the Sabbath, uh, you know, fit forever. But you see, the time that I had these Bible studies, four hours per evening, we started at 7 o'clock and finished at 11 o'clock at night. We had this Bible study similar to what you have, what you showed me the other day, that you have in your pocket. The Bible studies were about an hour. There were questions, and then you looked at the verses that they gave you in the Bible, and you had your answer. It was so fantastic. And uh, the Spirit of God was really ministering to me the graces of redemption. Every moment of that, of all those Bible studies was precious, 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 precious. Roger, at that time, your major language was French. You did not speak English, and all of this happened in the French language mm -hmm. in Montreal. How long after you became a Seventh-day Adventist, or after you learned of Seventh-day Adventists, did you read the book Great Controversy by Ellen White? Well, <clears throat> I... Um, Joined the church. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I first had a Bible study in October of '46. In April of '47, I was baptized into the church. In October, uh, September of that year, Ilda and I got married, and the French church in Montreal gave us, as a wedding gift, the Conflict of the Ages series. And I had not read the Greek controversy up to, up to then. But then you read it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what went through your mind when you read the book Great Controversy? Yeah. Thinking back on the experience you'd had maybe just a year or so before. That's right. What went through I your said, mind? This, per this person is inspired. This person has got knowledge that nobody else has on the face of the earth, except, you know, the spiritist that I was mentioning, because it's so unique. See? Well, I find it very remarkable mm -hmm. that they were willing to share the strategy that Satan is working on yeah, but with this group. Of course, their plan was that it would never get out. That's right. Under seal of death. They're, they're, that's right. Their plan is that uh, you don't have to worry about saying anything by the great master. Because as soon as, as anybody uh, strays some, the spirits will tell the, the high priest right away it's taking place. They did with my Bible study by Wednesday night. I studied on Monday and Tuesday by Wednesday night. The spirit counselor appeared to uh, the high priest and says, you have one of your defectors. He says, that mono guy, you're going to get rid of him. Because he's out there saying, saying the Bible with the Adventists, the people that, that the Master hates, hates most on the face of the earth. 
the high priest almost